Let's see who we can get on the line. I think we're switching through. Uh, we're calling California, and uh, Sherry, are you there? Good morning. Hello. Sherry, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Sherry. Hello. How are you? There, fine. This is Ken Barron's calling from WJBC. Sounds like it's busy wherever you are, even at this early hour. It is. We start early, and I go downhill so fast in the afternoon. I'm one of those morning people. <laughs> I tell you, I, yeah, we, we place a lot of calls out to California, but they say, gee, could you wait till at least 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning? It's only 7.30 where you are out there, or 7, what, 7.40 about now. No, I'm not kidding. We start really early here, and then by about 3.30, I'm absolutely ready for a nap, and I actually take it. Do you really? Oh, yeah. Helps. Well, if you have lamb chop around all the time, I suppose you need it, don't you? Well, no, she's a night person, so that she's still asleep. Uh-huh. Is she around by any chance? No, I'm serious. She's still asleep. She really is? Yeah, I mean, she might get up before we finish. Oh, okay. It's been known to happen. Such a cute little character with a name that sounds so close to somebody's dinner. Lamb chop. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yesterday she got very excited because we were talking to a man on radio whose name is Mr. Butcher. She never got comfortable. <laughs> I like it. You have uh, entertained kids and adults for so many years that it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on the line this morning. Oh, thank you. You have been busy with, uh, what is this, your 26th book? Yes. Isn't that funny? Well, you know, it's what happens if you marry a book publisher. If you marry a garment manufacturer, you're well-dressed. If you marry a book publisher, you're well-published. <laughs> Actually, he doesn't publish my book. Um, you I had to go get probably... somebody else to do it, huh? Well, uh, he did about three. And then we realized the tremendous difference between a genuine juvenile publisher and an adult publisher. So I went with Doubleday, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very happy. The 26th is called One Minute Favorite Fairy Tales. And it's the second book in a series of one-minute books that's going to, uh, that, I, that is now going to be a nine-book series. Um, the all the all one-minute books, all one-minute stories. Um, and people always ask me, why do you want one-minute stories as yeah. opposed to other stories. And I keep maintaining I am not opposed to longer stories. I don't think that any house should be a, a one-storybook family. And the one-minute stories are just another very amusing alternative. Mm -hmm. But the, you've turned these into videos as well, haven't you? Yeah. Um, the, the new video, which is out uh, yesterday, uh, is called One Minute Bedtime Stories as well. Okay. Doesn't, uh, this is a good question, I hope, doesn't a video bedtime story kind of defeat the purpose of uh, quality time with a child? Yes, it's a very good question. Actually, it doesn't de defeat the purpose because it shouldn't be a substitute. You know, your kids are watching a lot of TV, everybody's kids. I mean, my kid is now past that. Um, she's a grown-up. But uh, when my kid was watching TV, there was a lot of that going on, and I didn't have the benefit of the home video field. It's an absolute blessing. It's, it really gives the power back to the parent because there's a lot on TV that you don't want your kids to watch unless you're blind or crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the... the, um, the there's uh, a lot of stuff on TV parents probably shouldn't watch. I was well, no, you know, I do believe in consenting <laughs> adults, but kids really have their own um, problems, and one of the problems is that they are not discriminating, and they really do have to be protected. Um, and if you've watched the Saturday morning programs, you, you know how extremely filled with anger and violence they really are. Mm -hmm. Whether you're dealing with the A, the A team with Mr. T or uh, the Hulk, you know Hulk Hogan, mm -hmm. you're dealing with the kind of stuff that you just don't want your kids to be experiencing on a regular basis. You know, it's funny. We talked with B Dawes Butler yesterday, yeah. and he said uh, much the same thing. He he would like to see us get back to the days when characters were lovable. They liked each other, and they got on little little adventures with each other. Well, you know, as long as you have a society like the one that Mr. Reagan is imposing on us, where there are no sense of standards, um, but rather just free market children will suffer because kids don't have any kind of uh, uh, support systems. Kids don't have anybody lobbying for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they are really the victims. And today's kid television is just a commercial bloodbath. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's ever going to go back. And I think the parent who cares really is terribly lucky to have the home video field available because you don't have to buy much. Kids love to watch the same thing again and again. And if it's good, they catch new things all the time anyway, don't they? Uh, oh, yeah, time. but I mean, you know, 
know, thinking of the parent's pocketbook, yeah. um, the home video field is a better investment for kids than it is for adults because when adults buy a home video, how many times can you watch the same movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, while kids have been known to daily watch their home video. I know because of my mail. Yeah. Well, there are some good things on TV. There's uh, Sesame Street and th- the things like that. Oh, yeah. Those are just very young children. In England, they make a better distinction than we do. They divide um, children's programming into uh, Kitty Winky, which is the funny words that they use to describe programming for the very young um, children's and light entertainment, which is the word that they use to describe uh, entertainment for children who, who are um, uh, for families, actually. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that distinction helps them to separate and to recognize what they have. Sesame Street is for the very young. It's very good. Yeah. But when you get into the real child level, 7 to 11, you have very little that's good. You have Fat Albert. And really, you just have the nighttime programming. I mean, the Cosby Show is sure a good show. Mm-hmm. You have won, let's see, how many different Emmys? I think. About five. Five Emmys. So uh, when it comes to TV excellence, people have recognized the accomplishments that you have, uh, have achieved. You are an actress, a dancer, a musician who has uh, conducted and performed with more than 50 symphony orchestras. You sound a little bit like Danny Kaye here. Huh. Um, <laughs> you have uh, five Emmys and a Peabody. And so uh, you have really stuck around throughout the years. I, that's, a, that's a real credit to your, to your talents and what you've been able to provide for folks, I think. Well, I must tell you, the greatest fun I've had is this new home video field for lots of reasons. In the first place, when you work for a network, um, you are forced to reduce your stuff to the dopiest, lowest level. Um, Why is that? Why is that, Sherry? Um, because it's uh, creativity by committee. Uh, there's so many people who pass on things, and uh, they have to get the biggest numbers. They're not content with uh, selling to 20, 30 million people. They want to have huge numbers. Mm-hmm. And um, when you're trying to get huge numbers, you really uh, start lowering your standards a whole lot. And what we've discovered in the home video field is that there's a lot of parents out there who have high standards and just have had no alternative. Mm-hmm. So what I've been doing with my home videos is being really careful to please myself um, in one-minute bedtime stories, um, the latest of them. I've put in absolutely the best of the exciting childhood stories, stories like Sinbad the Sailor and Scheherazade, um, the swashbuckling stories from the Bible, um, ethnic tales like Baba Yaga, the Russian witch, and the kind of folk tales that just don't get told a lot, uh, Frog Prince, Rapunzel. Mm-hmm. And... Um, there are parents out there who really want more classy stuff for their kids, and that gives me the opportunity to do the more classy stuff, which sure as heck makes me happy. Yeah. I wanted to have you tell us one of those stories, if you don't mind. Oh, can we, sure. Can yeah. we do that in, in a minute? Yeah, sure. Let me break for a commercial or two. Okay. Lamb chop's still in bed, huh? Well, uh, while, you're, while, you're, you, while you're breaking up, I'll go see if I can wake her up. Okay. Twelve and a half in front of ten. Help your help. You can. We can. What's the healthiest thing you can do for yourself? The pharmacists at People's Drug Stores say it's to get involved in your own health care. And what do you need most for that? We say it's clear, up-to-date information that's free and always available. We're glad to answer your questions about your medications, both prescription and non-prescription, about the new home test kits, about vitamins and food supplements. In addition to this personal service, we're printing a series of pamphlets on a wide range of important health subjects. They're free at the prescription counter. Rely on your pharmacists at People's Drug Stores for Clark Vinyl Floors. For a limited time, it's your chance to save on three beautiful Congolium styles. Esteem, fashion floor, and innovation. They're all famous for their long-lasting beauty and unbeatable durability. They're all 20% off at the floor store. Choose the Congolium floor that suits your decorating needs and save 20% on the great performers now playing at the floor store. 1201 Morrissey Drive, Bloomington. We have Sherry Lewis on the line today. 829-2345 is our number if you'd like to talk with her. Maybe you have a question or a comment. Maybe you've enjoyed her work over the years, and particularly uh, the work of Lamb Chop, her, uh, I can't say right-hand man, but uh, right-hand... Uh, Lamb. Lamb, that's right. <laughs> Lest you forget. Can you tell us one of these stories? I'd really like to know how much we can get across in, in a minute, or you can get across All in a right, minute. if you've got a watch. Yeah. All right, if you'll watch your watch, I'll tell you the story of... Um, the goose 
Eggs that laid the golden egg. I'm ready. Okay, you tell me when to start. Anytime you'd like. Okay, here we go. Here's a story about a farmer in Kalamazoo who was starving and didn't know what to do until a stranger arrived at his farm carrying a goose under his arm. Take care of my goose, he said, and friend, the goose would take care of you in the end. And before the day was another hour old, the goose laid an egg that was made of gold. The farmer ran to town in a great mad dash, sold that egg for lots of cash all that day. And the next time told, the goose laid eggs that were made of gold. Thomas told the eggs made lots of dough. He became rich, but then, you know, he said, I really think it's a crime to have to make money one egg at a time. That goose, he really makes me sore. I'll bet in his belly he has dozens more. So the farmer grabbed him by the legs, killed the goose that laid the golden eggs. There were none inside the goose, of course, which filled the farmer with remorse. Soon his money was gone and he was needy. You see what you get for being greedy? <laughs> I like it. Well, well you yeah, like that it. Was just, well, that was just well, under a minute. How well you like it is not important, Ken. What's important is how long did it take? <laughs> it took about 55 seconds. 55 seconds. That's perfect. <laughs> so by the time you would do your introduction and your ending, yeah, it's a perfect minute. Perfect. Yeah. And the, you got a whole bunch of these in, uh, in this latest book and also videotape. Yeah. Actually, there are a lot of fun on home video. The kids go around chanting them. Um, Lamb Chop and Charlie Horse and I do them together on the uh, tape of One Minute Bedtime Stories. And I'm getting a lot of mail from parents who are my kids of the 60s, who are now 25 to 35, saying, I cannot believe that I'm getting to introduce my own kids to my childhood. Mm -hmm. We mentioned, uh, I was just talking to you off the air about Paul Winchell. Paul Winchell was kind of an inspiration for you, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Paul had his spy bell hour when I was a kid. And uh, then you came along with, uh, with Lamb Chop? Yeah. Lamb Chop is... Uh, well, one of those characters that has one of those tremendously flexible faces because it's, uh, you can do all kinds of things with her face, can't you? Well, she can do all kinds of things with her face. That's right, she can. She can do it herself. Have you Now, Paul Winchell went into the area of cartooning since I mentioned Dawes Butler earlier. I know you worked with him. You did cartoon voices for a while, didn't you? I did. It was very interesting. I came out to the coast here. Uh, I, I live in Beverly Hills, and I had lived in New York City. So I came out to this um, place, which is an absolute factory for cartoons, and um, I got some offers and started doing some voices. One day, my daughter was little, and it was Saturday morning, and some show was on. And I said, oh, darling, why don't you turn off that junk? And she said, Mommy, you did the voices. <laughs> and so I recognized that I could not continue to talk, as they say, out of both sides of the mouth, even though I wasn't moving my lips. So you uh, dropped so it. So huh? I absolutely quit it. Um, you know, my mother said something. My mother or my husband, I can't remember, said something very interesting the other day. Um, I think it was my husband, as a matter of fact. We were watching the Saturday morning lineup, and um, the Hulk Hogan show was on where the heavies, the enemies, are a, the bad guys, are an Arab with a big nose, a Russian, and an Asian. Um, and the enemies are as stereotyped as anything mm -hmm. you will ever see. And um, my husband reminded me that when I started in television, I was what's called a film jockey. Um, there were uh, there were cartoons, and I would do the live parts introducing the cartoons, you know? Oh, yeah. And, of yeah. course, I was, at that time, very busy creating my characters and writing, and so I really wasn't paying attention to the cartoons. And one day, my mother called me, and she said, Darling, you can't really continue to show those cartoons. She said one of them, yesterday, had a Jewish fish tied to a log, and it was being sent toward a sawmill by an Irish cat. And as the log approached the sawmill, the Irish cat laughed with a heavy brogue, and the Jewish fish moaned, oy vey, oy vey. Mm. So um, I went to the station manager, and he explained that those cartoons were very inexpensive because they had been made around the turn of the century, and uh, that we had no choice. We, we had to keep them. And I said I couldn't do a show with those, and I was promptly fired. Well, if, I, I cannot believe that 85 years later... Um, they are creating new cartoons with the same kind of really dangerous stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never been pro-Arab in my life, but if we ever hope to have peace, we certainly can't have Arab enemies that are being introduced to our children as uh, all black uh, enemies. Mm -hmm. It is uh, simply impossible. And if we ever hope to have peace with Russia, um, we can't have our kids automatically thinking stereotypically that all Russians are evil. No, because there are some good ones, there are some bad ones, just like there are good Americans and bad Americans. Sure. Right? I mean, it's, it's really uh, appalling. 
Yeah. You have something coming up on the Disney Channel, don't you? Oh, it's very nice. Thank you. I, I've forgotten about that. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. It's a one-hour special called Cherry's Christmas Concert. And um, I work with a symphony. It's a comedy show uh, for the family. And I work with a symphony um, in it, conducting the symphony and performing. I dance with two five-foot-four-inch showgirl puppets. And this show is called, Lamb Chop is on it, of course, and it's called Sherry's Christmas Concert. I think it's the best piece of work I have ever done in my life. That's good. A lot of people say that about their latest work, of course. But you really mean this. Oh, yeah, I really do. Yeah. Um, it has my live show on tape and lovingly done, and um, it's good stuff. Yeah. You sound like you're very concerned about the kind of material that goes out. It's not j if you know it's funny, but if it's not right, you're not going to do it, right? Um, yeah, pretty much. You know, I really like what I do, and um, uh, I have a tremendous sense of pride in, in not doing junk. Mm -hmm. Is uh, is Lamb Chop around? Yes, yeah, she's got up and she's rubbing the lanolin out of her eyes. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it. Lamb Chop, this gentleman would like to talk to you. Is he the bum who wrote me up? <laughs> he's not a bum. He's a nice man. <laughs> not nice to wake up a person. It's well, awfully early. Why don't you just say hello? Hello. Hello, Lamb Chop. How are you? Well, I'm all right. How are you? I'm uh, I'm fine. I'm sorry I woke How you up so early. How could you be fine with such a guilty conscience? <laughs> I don't have a guilty conscience. Conscience. Don't even have a vocabulary. <laughs> it's too early. I'm sorry I woke you up, but uh, it's time for breakfast, isn't it? No, it's not because because Sally lets me sleep. She does all of her so in the morning, and then I do it in the, in the afternoon. Okay. And then when she's napping, I'm working. I got it. That's what, called steam. What kind of work do you do? I, I sing. You sing? Uh, yes, and I do funny stuff. Could you give us a sample? No. <laughs> no, it's, it's too early in the morning. I understand. I understand. Maybe I, I'll let you go back to bed and catch another, I, I, another I count, few winks. Yeah, I count sheep jumping over a fence. You do? Yeah. Just the family or... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lamb Chop, thanks. Can That's you... it, huh? Yeah. You woke me up for that? <laughs> Sorry. Gee, he is a bum. Oh, come on, Lamb Chop. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. Well, she's a little testy right now, huh? Testy, right. I understand. Sherry, it's a pleasure to talk with you. Nice talking with you. All the best with uh, with all of the new projects. Thank you. I, I didn't realize there were so many books. Are they all they all give you credit when you've written them, of course. But uh, titles, if somebody went to the library or tried to buy some of these back uh, back books, they could still do it, could they? Well, yeah, the series, um, the One Minute Bedtime series is uh, one of the hottest series in the country. It's uh, very nice. You know, you're, you're a publisher's wife and you have best-selling books. Yeah. That's one thing that impresses him. Um, <laughs> and the two latest titles are One Minute Favorite Fairy Tales which just came out about three weeks ago, yeah. and one of the bedtime stories. What's, what specific age group are you reaching with uh, with these books? Well, you know, it varies. Um, they're terrific for the very young. Well, of If you have a child, you're still reading, too. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I read to my daughter until she was about eight, because she liked it. And now my husband reads out loud to me. Um, <laughs> the books are swell if you're reading to kids, and um, they're a lot of fun for early readers, the kids mm -hmm. who are um, seven, eight, because... They're fun for them to read and memorize the stories themselves. I got it. Sherry, thank you very much. Nice talking with you, Ken. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sherry Lewis.